this is courtesy again another one from Twitter this is courtesy of Robert Peston who's kind of been at the forefront um, in terms of providing us with leaks from the government concerning COVID. It's been a little bit annoying, don't get me wrong, that you get, especially in the beginning, I think he got a lot more negative reaction um, earlier on when things were a bit bleak and he tended to be the first person to kind of deliver the, you know, the bad news. And if you're a journalist now at the moment, you're not really that well regarded by the public in general, right? In the UK, in Europe, in parts of the US, people just hate journalists for the most part because, you know, they think they're the enemy of the people because they're not necessarily doing the work that you'd think a journalist would do. Instead, they kind of, you know, nitpicking people's language and flipping chat rooms and trying to, you know, tell people what how they should and shouldn't think instead of actually going to the access of power and challenging them at every turn they're essentially just basically keeping up the status quo but obviously towards the end of the you know the time now that we've kind of been in lockdown and we're going to hopefully be heading out of it and back to our normal lives Robert Peston's kind of been great in terms of updating us with terms of some of the things that's going on um that we can maybe anticipate for this new announcement coming forward it might indicate where we're basically going and I guess the good news was for myself and people that are interested in stuff that I'm interested in is that this original tweet here this is from about you know sometime earlier today he noted during Boris Johnson's press conference he said important um Boris Johnson says that the way theatres nightclubs and concerts and so on will be able to open will be by them insisting those who attend can prove they've been vaccinated or have a rapid flow test um which is surely a COVID identity card he said here by the back door if it allows us to important feedback uh, freedom back is this infringement on one's availability such a bad thing so i think there was a lot of talk if you remember in early i guess in the summer there was some conversation around um covid passports um in order to attend you know large-scale events and the idea i thought behind it mostly had to do with insurance companies not wanting to be liable for anyone ended up sick the last thing you know the organizers of, of coachella or glastonbury want is for somebody to contract covid at their premises end up passing away or passing it to somebody and some something fatal happening no one wants to have that on their back on their conscience um end up in the court case it's just not good pr at all so if you can kind of mitigate that um responsibility by having your patrons either you know uh pay for a rapid test on site or have some sort of card that basically tells the the, the organizer that you have been cleared of having covid in the last let's say two weeks a month whatever it may be <coughs> or you've sorry or you've been vaccinated in the last two months weeks whatever how long the window is it then kind of absolves them of responsibility if anything goes wrong because you know you have essentially um declared that you're healthy enough to attend if they do it to everybody else and by theory even if you know there is some um wiggle room there because people do bring back tests where they double, double negative when they're not so that can basically happen you know some anomalies can occur but it does mean that we can maybe get back to some semblance of normality if you remember there was that event earlier on in the summer where i think the primavera organizers did like a kind of trial run where they essentially tested everybody before the actual event and if you were positive unfortunately you couldn't attend but then if you weren't then you could go in and it was essentially a standard primavera festival done on a smaller scale i think that like 1600 people attended local acts playing only so it limited again people traveling back and forth bloody blah 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 um but they were able to do that in the midst of everything that's going on have people dancing and reveling around each other no restrictions no nothing and if we are thinking that an entire sectors on their knees which you know the hospitality and nightlife industry definitely is suffering a lot there's not been a lot of support not really been an indication as to when it can reopen so i guess the, on one hand i think sasha lord mentioned it earlier the fact that boris johnson's even uttered the word nightclub in the you know i think the first time maybe in 11 months is something to kind of be happy about because it does mean that you know it might be in these plans and the announcements coming forward next week but it's also maybe a sobering um, realization that if you do want to go back to nightclubs there might be as Preston um, kind of noted there might have to be some sort of give and take um, there might be some sort of sacrifices needed in terms of you getting inside a nightclub again so the question would be do you want to go back in a nightclub bad enough that you're willing to infringe on your own civil liberties um be put on some sort of list a database have your you know information dna whatever it may be called uploaded on some sort of system that allows you to enter a nightclub again is it worth that that's the question is it worth that and i don't know for myself whether or not it is 
to go back. I would much rather maybe wait. We've already waited as long as we have now at the moment. If it means waiting a few more months in order to get everybody vaccinated, so that means that everything can reopen as was before, fair play. But what's the timeline of that? Really and truly, the, the only place, only time I can see you know, a nightclub that I went to in 2019 opening to the same scale, as I mentioned in other videos, is 2022. In terms of actually everyone just, you know, elbow to elbow, shoulder to shoulder, spitting on each other, hanging out in a smoking room, getting busy in the, in the toilets. I can't see that happening any other time ahead of that. Um, so this is maybe a kind of uh, realisation, a wake up call for everybody. If you want to go back to clubs, you're going to have to um, give up some of your civil liberties. Harsh, but that might be the truth. So it continues here. This is an update. He says the following. Um, Downing Street is very keen to point out that the PM has explicitly ruled out that there will be an official requirement to carry a vaccine passport or proof of having the COVID test before going to a pub and so on, which you can see here. But he says, my point is that when he says he, we can reopen, we can only reopen theatres and so on with mass vaccinations and the use of rapid lateral flow testing that introduces an unofficial system of COVID-19 identity cards, whether that's by government ordinance or not. The only way the PN can prevent COVID-19 identity cards being intruded by the back door is to make it illegal for a theatre or entertainment pub to refuse entry to someone who can't prove that they've had a vaccine or not. Would that be rational for him to do so? Is it likely no one knows so that's very important to point out there so it looks like the government is trying to absolve themselves of responsibility they don't want to be um you know they've already done a bad job as it is they don't want to be known as the people putting forward these draconian almost orwellian um you know requirements for people to go and you know shake their bums in a club somewhere they won't they don't want to be known as that so they're kind of absorbing themselves of blame and placing it mostly on the operators in that sector so Will these clubs, in order to reopen, decide to do such a thing? How would that email be worded? <laughs> How many people would want to do so, considering the kind of um, anti, uh, anti kind of anti everything you'd, you'd imagine personnel that kind of occupies or goes into a nightclub in the first place you'd imagine it wouldn't really go down well but i don't know man spending 11 months indoors does funny things to your to your resolve right it might make you be more willing to do things that you probably weren't willing to do so in the past but let me know in the comments do I, would you be willing to um carry around a vaccine passport in order to make sure you can go into your favorite nightclub or would you like me rather wait until we can go back with uh, having to upload our data and spit and DNA onto a, you know, a main database somewhere in order to open a nightclub. Let me know what you think in the comments down below.